So one of the greatest things that impacted my career is the fact that when I was in university, I was able to do a ton of internships. I went to the University of Waterloo in Canada, and basically while you're doing your degree, you go through two years of internship. And during these internships, you know, you can join companies, you are basically treated like a full-time employee depending on where you go, and you're really able to work to get paid and get the experience of what being a full-time developer is like. The best part is that, you know, you can go to a ton of like really cool companies. Uh, I got the chance to go to Silicon Valley and work for a startup there and make some good money and like really learn a lot. So, so I really am grateful for the fact that I was able to do internships. And that's what today's video is gonna be about. It's gonna be about if you're going through your first internship, what you should do to succeed, what you should expect, and basically some of the things that improved my internship experience. So my first internship was like basically a tech support kind of role. Uh, I was just helping people that had problems with their hardware and software and stuff like that. It was nothing crazy. But my last internship, you know, a couple years down the line, I was working as like a full stack developer in Silicon Valley. So no matter what your first internship is, it doesn't really matter. But as long as you can get your foot in the door, gain some experience, get something to put on your resume and actually do well in the position, then you can go from there and like basically iterate and the next jobs you get can be more closer to a dev job. And then eventually you can find yourself working at like a fan company, like I'm working at Amazon right now. So I want to reiterate that during my internships, that's really where I learned how to code. I found it a lot more engaging uh, on the job than in a classroom. When we were coding for school, obviously we were learning things, but it wasn't as fun. It wasn't in my opinion, as like practical. In the internships, you were working uh, on real code that people were seeing. Sometimes you got like real live feedback from users and it was basically a lot cooler for me. So that's really where I learned how to code. So in my experience, if you can get an internship, it's possible that like in, in a four month internship, for example, you could learn more than a year in the classroom, right? My biggest struggle when I got my first internship was that I thought I was gonna fail. I thought that I had no idea what I was doing and you know I thought I was gonna get fired even though it's extremely hard for interns to get fired, right? But what you have to understand is that if you got the internship, that means you went through an interview process, there were people that talked to you, you didn't just get hired randomly, right? And if you ended up getting the job at this point, you should understand that if you got the job, that means the company thinks you're good enough to succeed and that's all you need to know really. You're not expected as an intern to go in on day one, push a code review, make a pull request, you know, make some groundbreaking change to their code base. You know, you're expected for the first couple of weeks, even like a month or maybe two, to just learn, to onboard, to, you know, set up your environment, to get a feel for the code base, maybe work on a couple of like really small tasks just to get you familiar with their development process and their like version control and all that stuff. But my expectation when I, when I like started internships was always, you know, I would always be nervous. I would always think that, you know, I would, I would get found out for being a bad developer, but that's, that was never the case. That wasn't true. I just had like imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of interns have the same thing. And that's basically because the expectations you set for yourself are too high and you, you, you think that you need to be pushing code from day one, but that's not true. But you know, whatever, whichever the case is, I always treated it like a full-time position. And I think that you guys should as well. If you treat it seriously, don't treat it like, you know, you're in school and you're like, you're fooling around and stuff. Treat it like a full-time job, especially if you're getting paid, because if, if done well, not only could you get a return offer and like work there full-time one day, if you really enjoyed it, but you'll be able to learn so much from real world experience that you don't get in a classroom. So if you're given the opportunity to go through an internship, I would really, really take advantage of it and kind of make the most of it. Some of the things that I learned from previous internships, from previous mentors, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about mentors uh, in a bit. A couple of really niche things that some mentors told me that really made my experience better and really helped me become a better programmer. While you're interning or while you're just learning how to code, make contributions to existing Git projects. If you go on GitHub, you go to existing projects, you go on like open problems, there's a ton of projects out there that are open source, that have bugs, that are like pretty well defined. And basically what you can do is, you know, push a fix to these repositories and just basically get more experience with different languages, get more experience with pushing code using Git, using version control and all of that. When one of my previous mentors during one of my internships told me that, he's like, he was like, look, listen, like just tr really try to go through some Git projects, make some contributions. And if you can successfully do it, you'll see that like you've learned so much. And what I, when I went through that process, I really did learn a lot and it's, it was really a good experience. And another thing that I would recommend you guys to do while you're interning would be to just apply to other to different jobs and just do as many interviews as you can, not with the uh, goal of switching jobs, but just with the goal of getting good at interviews. So when I was like looking for internships, one of the biggest things and the reasons why like I sometimes wouldn't get the jobs I wanted wasn't necessarily because I was bad at coding, but it was because I was bad at doing interviews. And we've talked about this on the channel before, 
but you know the skills required to pass an interview and the skills required to succeed at your job are two completely different skills you know in coding interviews you're mostly going through data structures algorithm type questions and those don't really apply in the in the real world right in the real world you're probably not going to like reverse a binary search tree do anything crazy like that uh, because these are pre just pretty niche problems that mostly display your understanding and your problem solving skills not necessarily your coding ability so while i was interning by applying to different jobs by just going through interviews and you know just doing as many interviews as i could i got a lot more confident i got a lot better at interviews and you know i really think it did help me you don't really have to join you don't really have to tell anyone that you know you're interning just put on your resume that you're unemployed apply to jobs do the interviews and it's genuinely one of the best ways to practice so i would do these two things that's some of the things that my mentors taught me in the past uh, that I really found helpful. I think the single best thing that you can do as an intern is, you know, find a mentor that will help you grow as a developer, right? You can learn from their mistakes. These are usually developers that have been working for 10, 15 plus years that have worked with many different languages in a lot of different companies. And you can just imagine the amount of knowledge that you can absorb by just observing them, by just asking them questions day to day, by learning from them, developing the habits that are required to get to their level. If you think about it, your goal is to get where from where you are to where they are. Right? And if they did it in like 10 to 15 years, you can take what they've learned and not make the same mistakes that they've made along the way. Right? You can avoid those mistakes and you can kind of shorten that time if you put in the effort. I really do think that finding a mentor, learning from them, developing a good relationship like that is super beneficial. And it has definitely helped me uh, along my career. And you know, as I was going through school and now that I'm a full-time software developer, I still take lessons that I've learned from some of my free previous mentors and, and use them every day. And you know, at the end of the day, it's a good friendship to have. It's a good relationship to have. And just, you never know, you could work with them in the future again. So I would definitely, you know, if you're an intern right now or you're about to start your first internship, make that one of your goals to find a mentor and kind of build that relationship. The last thing I wanna talk about is that when you're an intern, you're expected to fail. The most crucial part of the experience is that you're kind of working as a full-time developer, but you don't really have the same expectations from their end. And you are kind of given like a get out of jail free card when you're an intern to break things, to ask stupid questions, and to kind of take a bit longer than expected because you are only there to learn. The only expectation that is on your shoulders is that you're going there for four months, six months, a year, whatever it is, and you're just there to learn. You're not supposed to revolutionize the company or do a ton of crazy things. You're just expected to learn. And part of that is breaking things and failing. One of the things that I avoided a lot when I was learning how to code when I was going through internships is you know taking more risks I really wish I would have taken more risks I wish I would have broken more things because it really is one of the times where you can get away with all that stuff and really learn a lot without all the consequences when you're an intern but there have been you know one or two times in the past during my internships where I made some really big mistakes and a lot of users were affected in like production stuff like that and I still take those experiences to this day. You know, I talk about them in interviews. I think about what I learned from those experiences. And what I did learn is that you should just embrace failure because it's gonna happen eventually. And you know, everyone fails at, one, at a certain point. So instead of trying to avoid it at all costs, what you should do is expect it, be ready for it. And the most important thing is you don't make the same mistake again. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're about to start your first internship or one of your first internships, congratulations. It is a sick experience. I enjoyed all my internships. I do think internships are a great time to learn as a developer and really, really, you know, expedite that process of becoming a full-time developer. So let me know guys, if you've enjoyed this video, if you have anything you wanna add, leave a comment down below. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, if you've learned something, I would greatly appreciate a like on the video and a subscribe from you. It, it would really make my day. Thank you so much. And as always guys, take it easy and enjoy your coding.